and tonight on PM Express, a very pressing conversation about how COVID monies have been spent over the period. Recently, the minority has called for a full-blown audit of how the country's COVID resources have been spent. That hasn't yet happened, but even before it happens, a fresh study conducted by civil society group Send Ghana and the International Budgetary Partnership on Ghana has cited lack of transparency on the part of government in handling the country's COVID-19 related expenditure. Tonight, we are interrogating this report and also probing government's actual expenditure on COVID-19. So what did Send Ghana study? And I'll tell you right now in that study, Send Ghana studied how the government managed its initial COVID-19 fiscal policy responses between 1st March and 30th September 2020. Um, it had it focused its study on three pillars. One, the extent of transparency. Two, public engagement on the emergency fiscal policy pack, packages introduced by government. And the third one, oversight of the emergency fiscal policy packages introduced by government. We'll be talking about the policy packages that were introduced, including the Obatampa policy and others, the ones for businesses. We'll talk about that later, but what did the... Send Ghana find in their survey funds for COVID-19 National Trust Fund, which is an extra budgetary fund also used to finance the response, did not go through legislative oversight. That's uh, the first thing. The Auditor General did not announce any special audits or actions to provide additional oversight for COVID-19 related spending. It goes on to say that there were limited formal opportunities made available by the government to consult with the public. And it says there are inconsistencies in COVID-related budget implementation reporting. Remember, if you've been following conversations um, over the period, there's been consistent calls by the minority for an audit to be done into the funding of COVID-19 activities. And... Uh, Tonight, we'll be interrogating the report and also see whether we still need an audit or does it settle the matter? We'll be looking at all of that. Now, it says on water subsidy, 560 million cities was allocated in the 2020 mid-year review. However, the 2021 budget provided updates on water and sanitation covering only three months. That is from April to June 2020. Remember, the government extended that to the end of the year. But the report says there was no account for that. And uh, that amounted to 276 million instead of the 560 million cities that was used for that. On electricity subsidies, 1.1 billion Ghana cities was approved in the 2020 mid-year review, while no update was provided in the 2021 budget. And so these are issues that we'll be looking at. This situation makes it difficult, according to the survey, to compute the actual execution rates for some specific COVID-19 interventions for 2020. Thankfully, we have um, those who put together the survey who will be joining this discussion. and will be looking at the criteria and modalities that were used in putting together this research. They make key recommendations, and tonight I will share some with you. The Ministry of Finance should deepen transparency and accountability by publishing regular budget performance reports and, and without delays. So this is one of the recommendations. Now, it says to aid proper citizen monitoring and ensure value for money, the Ministry of Finance should provide quarterly briefs on COVID-19 spending from all funding resources. The Ministry of Finance should be consistent in budgetary performance reporting across all official documents, mid-year budget reviews and budget statements. Now, future interventions should come with outcome indicators at the onset, outset to enable proper performance evaluation. Like I said earlier, the minority has been demanding all this while a full-blown audit, forensic audit, into government's borrowing and COVID-19 related expenditure. So tonight, we'll be swinging into the conversation fully after this break. We'll get all the answers from Send Ghana that put together this report and also get answers from government whether there were discrepancies in government expenditure. Stay with me.
Welcome back to PM Express. Now, joining me in the studio tonight is Dr. Stephen Amwa. He's member of the Finance Committee of Parliament <laughs> and he's MP for Nshiaisu Constituency. And also joining me virtually via Zoom is Dr. Emmanuel Eisa. He's Deputy Country Director at Saint Ghana. Dr. Kujopoku is also a development economist at the Center for Social Policy at the University of Ghana. And uh, I'm grateful that all of you joined us. Honorable, thanks so much for coming. Um, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me on this. Mm. Let, let me begin with you, um, Dr. Eifa. What were the parameters for this survey? Okay, thank you very much. Um, good evening to your cherished viewers. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity for us to talk about our work on the Open Budget Survey. Uh, let me say that the Open Budget Survey, this is not the first time we've done this. And this is a work in partnership with uh, International Budget Partnership. And we decided that because of COVID, the 2020 edition, a section of it will focus on COVID. So that is a special edition, but we have an extensive OBS, Open Budget Survey, as we call it. Uh, but for this one, the focus purely was on uh, our COVID. So as you highlighted, we looked at from 1st March uh, last year, basically to 30th September 2020. Uh, what we look out for are three key indicators, um, broad indicators. And for us, the main idea is that as, part, as much as possible, uh, our budget should inform policy. Sorry, our work on the open budget um, framework should inform policy and advocacy issues. So we focus on what is called transparency. We focus on participation and we focus on oversight. Transparency, we are basically looking at uh, the need for us to have comprehensive budget information for the public. So every ordinary Ghanaian need to be able to have access to comprehensive budget information. It should be really available. And at the right time, that public can use to inform certain key decisions. Aside that, it is important that every citizen is part of the budget processes. So that is where participation also comes in as one of the, the building blocks of looking at the open survey. I mean, linking it to the SDGs, we say that we should leave no one behind. And for that matter, in terms of participation, as much as for even the most disadvantaged to be part of the budgeting processes. And the last burden block has to do with what we call budget oversight, where we look at supreme institutions like the legislature, the parliament, and then the supreme audit institutions within the country and some financial uh, of fiscal independent institutions, also to what extent they do have oversight. So these are the three building blocks that we use in assessing uh, a country's budget to as open um, budget. And indeed, for the COVID one, we still focus on these uh, key parameters. And then what happens is that uh, we peruse various government uh, documents. We look at various websites of government to see to what extent the budget information that we, we need to assess are available. And of course, let me put this in context. Because we did this at the COVID era, we do understand that sometimes, at that time, situations were such that we were not in normal times. And for that matter, where we didn't find the information available, we sought to even speak directly um, to the Ministry of Finance. Uh, to be able to make sure that we get uh, what we needed to inform uh, the, 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 the survey. Uh, we had 26 indicators. What I spoke to you about, openness, transparency, oversight, are the three building blocks. But within them, we had as much as 26 indicators. I'm not sure whether time will allow for us to go through uh, all the 26 indicators. But I think for um, the sake of viewers, we can look at a breakdown of the three pillars on which uh, this uh, study was conducted uh, and what was found under each of them. Okay, thank you. So, um, as I said, 
The first one is purely about transparency issues. So we look at what extent certain budget uh, documents or information are available to the public, i.e. issues of receipt, issues of expenditure, what the money has been spent on. And critical, as I indicated, this was purely on the COVID uh, budget. So you remember that in June um, last year, the media budget specifically focused on COVID. So that is what largely the assessment was on. To what extent the budget information was, was there to the public by looking at uh, the Ministry of Finance uh, website. Uh, what we did was that there are certain specific questions and then uh, the, the enumerator who is uh, a, a sent a colleague had to specifically look at uh, which of them actually gets to answer the issue of transparency and, 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 and for that matter, issue of whether budget information available well. So that, that largely covered that. Uh, what we did was then to categorize them into either we are performing minimally, either the performance is limited, whether it's somewhat or adequate or it's substantive. Uh, we did not decide this time around to do it as an index because of the time that we find ourselves in. So as much as possible, we would not have been fair on scoring countries based on that um, raw score. So we tried to have some category and then what we did is that it's from zero to one. And if you score um, between zero and uh, zero, 0 0.2, then it means that it's minimal. Between 0 0.2 to four, 0 0.4, it is limited. Between 0 0.4 to 0 0.6, it is some, then adequate, and then the, the, the best of all is substantive, which is 0 0.81 to uh, one. Uh, so these this are the, the main um, areas that we looked at. We look at issue of aggregating the macroeconomic budget information. We look at information on policy measures. We look at information in relation to recipient and performance of budget. We look at information on extra budget funds availability. We also look at budget execution information, whether they were available. We look at information on procurement whether they were really available. And also in terms of oversight, we looked at the role of the legislature as I indicated, and the role of um, the audit um, service. Was there an audit uh, constituted within the time that we had to look at? Were there certain approvals that had to go to parliament that actually went to parliament or they sidestep parliament to just uh, go on uh, doing certain, uh, carrying out certain expenditure? So, Broadly, these are the, the, the specific areas um, that we looked at, looking at the 26 uh, indicators. And of course, for public participation, we just look at to what extent people were involved in it. I know that because we work closely with the Ministry of Finance during the budget process, there's one thing that the Ministry does well, when, especially when it comes to uh, every annually inviting input from citizens. But as I indicated, for this one, we're focusing on just the COVID era. Mm -hmm. And of course, possibly we're not in normal times. So they couldn't have actually um, gone on to really invite uh, the, the public to actually provide input as uh, they would do normally. But okay. still, there could have still been some, some, some ways to go about it. In terms of... I don't know if I could go yeah, on. Yeah, so Dr. The... Ifa, I would get you to um, respond to how we came by the um, finding that government was not uh, transparent or there were inconsistencies in the spending of monies. I mean, exactly what led to this conclusion. But let me bring in, in uh, Dr. Amwa because um, he would help us understand. So from the Finance Committee point of view, do you really think that there were some gaps in accounting for monies approved for government? Sometimes I get a bit worried the way we probably uh, handle um, certain state issues or some state issues, uh, which, in my opinion, mislead decision-making processes of the country and introduces a lot of arbitrariness and 
decisions we make as a state. Are you saying and that this I'm coming. Please, let me, let, me, let me make my point. Okay. I beg you. You don't pick just an extract. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Because, to be honest with you, uh, I'm not sounding to you now. Maybe my brother knows more than I do. Okay. Because my, maybe, because all the things he's talking about, are against which set standards or benchmark, mm. against which we can say that this is, he's talking about zero to nine years, all these things could be said by anybody, but against which legal requirement that we haven't done, that is one. Two, the PFM Act, 2016, Act 921, Section 18. I am not a legal practitioner. I am not a legal practitioner. But at least the statement is so emphatic that it will be wrong. I'm not saying that if there's evidence of siphoning money or misappropriating state funds, we cannot raise issues. No, that is wrong. Okay. We all want to make sure that state resources are properly put to you good use. But we need to stay within the confines of the law and also understand the dynamics of the time. In the first place, this statement extract from the PFM Act state three main conditions under which we as a country should or must suspend our fiscal rules and policies. Okay. One is natural disaster. Two is um, state of emergency, if my memory is said right. Three is health epidemic, okay. which of course, whether epidemic or pandemic. Mm. And these are so emphatic. I think the framers of the law and the constitution know that in times such as this, sticking to the bureaucracy and the legal framework and the policies and the trends and the conventions will probably mean that you are going for an option which will lead to deaths. Okay. And so if somebody wants to overlook all these and want us to behave and operate, I'm not saying because of that we should uh, abuse state funds. No, I'm one person that I always speak against corruption. Mm. You understand? I'm not perfect. I can make mistakes and be in trouble. But mm. and a lot of people know that Steka will not deliberately go and go in corruption. Okay. I'm against it because state resources, state resources. Okay. But let us also be very careful the way sometimes we handle certain issues that are uncontrollable. Mm. For instance, situation has discovered tender came. Let's be very honest. Which of the countries could sit down, go through uh, bureaucracies, and then uh, conventions, the way we spend, go through all the processes, uh, proving this before we go and spend to save life or to save money. Uh, right. When you're talking about state budget, again, I'm not a legal practitioner. Mm. But of course, the budget is not just presented just like, oh, after each 20 weeks or uh, quarterly, we should bring this and mm. that. We have a legal framework defining the critical activity path of our budget setting and then outlays and stuff like that and the reporting mm. we have. Mm. They even bring you to parliament and the parliament, of course, finance committee will go through, they take you to parliament, mm. we even vote on it because without parliamentary approval, we cannot expand and there are times to come. These are all within our legal framework. And then at least I have been a CEO before. I don't know. That aspect, I don't know. That's why I keep on saying I'm not a legal practitioner. Okay. Whether the law demands that we should look for public input or it is expectation of Ghanaians or a certain group of people, because I would have been very surprised. Mm. But yeah, What I know yeah. is that institutions take their individual budgets from departments okay. and build it up and they will put a consolidated budget together for okay. approval. In, in that uh, survey, one of the findings was that, um, for instance, in 2020, there was some expenditure for electricity, but that was not accounted for in the 2021 budget. I mean, the, is, isn't this in order to it, ask government to account for what no, no, it used? Saying, okay. There's nothing wrong with it. But what I'm saying is that we have processes and procedures. Mm. And we have the legal requirements. So I am expecting people to come out and say that, hey, we have, well, how come we have audit report at the end mm. of the year every time? Okay. Which, of course, is the statutory one, is the most reliable one. Because we also have a lot of bodies and heads. I'm not talking about my doctor. No, mm. I'm, I don't even know him. Okay. Who also have the underlying interest of serving needs of other people politically. Mm. Unless we don't want to sound 
honest in our country. Okay. And that is why we have statutory official bodies mm. whose report probably might not be 100%, but we know that these are the requirements. So what we have to do is to go strictly by the law. The time in which we need to understand peace times mm. and war times. Okay. So and we need to understand what the laws say or demand, mm. whether we are working in line with the law. If we make expenditure and it does not appear in that one, it's of, it's of much concern. So, Dr. As, Amua, how they, do you explain... Are they written to the appropriate body for response? But because you, you heard him. He said they've been liaising with the Ministry of and Finance. And the Ministry of Finance did not do anything. this research. But so, Dr. Aifa so, would respond to that. So, I was expecting that. my brother to have told us that, because even audit, that's why we have open conference and exit conference. Mm. You come, you set your parameters, you define your points of reference and parameters and other things, your mm. KPIs, mm. and then they, we all agree okay. that you move on to your work. Mm. When you finish, before you even do your report, you come and ask further questions for clarity, then you put your document together, then you can move out. Okay. So I want to know whether what he is talking about, he actually contacted the finance ministry or the those who expended the money and they could not answer, they could not say Accounts. anything, and then he captured that in the report or what? But before I give him the opportunity, I, hope you understand what I'm saying. I, I do understand, but how would you explain something like um, water subsidy for six months, but at the end of the day, it was only three months that was accounted for? I mean, what really... Is it, what is accounted could, for? What, what it, could account it, for not accounting I, I for such money? I seriously don't understand the work he did. I'm okay. being honest with you, because... If you're talking about budget, I know three key things. If it is the budget, okay. you talk about revenue, what is coming in. Mm. Then you talk about expenditure or outlay, what is going out. Yeah. The differences could give you deficit or surplus. Mm. And then you can also establish your controls and then analyze the variance. The variance will tell you whether your actuals are the same as your budget. Okay. I hope you understand. But mm. if it is about audit... Mm -hmm. It's also having its own scope of work and definitions. Mm -hmm. Because then you talk about a few things such as one, I mean, whether your financial statement, which, of course, illustrate the transactions that you embarked on, mm -hmm. conform to the standards that we have, because we have reporting standards. Mm -hmm. Two, whether it reflects the actual work or activity, the materiality that you engage in, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You need to find out all this. And then three, whether you, you actually conform with all two or you comply with the control systems guiding that particular exercise. These are all there. Okay. But then I explain that because of the situation we have, it is even stipulated in our laws. And I quoted and I'm repeating, unless I'm wrong because I'm mm -hmm. not a legal practitioner, okay. that are fiscal rules and policies. And what are fiscal rules and policies? Mm -hmm. You're talking about our budget. You're talking about tax policies. It involves, uh, it includes our outlays and expenditures. They are saying that because of this situation, even without the law stating that, we ourselves should know mm. that we are in crisis, that there will be a lot of knee-jerk decisions. Mm. There will be a lot of decisions that if you even don't take care, you make wild mistakes. Okay. We need to be extremely holistic with some of these things mm. so that we don't compare an outlier situation to systems and conventions. Okay. This is what I'm talking uh, about. Thankfully, Dr. Aifa is still there. Doc, um, one of the things uh, Honorable is questioning is that against which benchmark was this survey conducted? And again, he's talking about the fact that it's, uh, we are in a pandemic era, and so we cannot go strictly to procedures. Um, <laughs> Dr. Poku, just be a little patient for me. I'll come to you. Let Dr. Aifa oh, address it's, this it's for opinion. me. opinion. So. I, I think... I think they should quote yeah. what I quoted and say I'm wrong. This is my opinion. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. And hi, Stika. Stika, hi. I think we're we in tech together. Oh, okay. Um, Technocrat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so, remember I indicated that we know, I mean, we were not in normal times. Yeah. So we had to put everything in contest. Okay. And so the fact is that Yes, there have to be explanations to why we, we perform the way we perform. Uh, let me say, we are not, the, the report is not totally rubbishing the country that Ghana did not do well at all. I mean, if you look at it, we said that 
and the report reflects stronger practices in transparency during the introduction of the media budget uh, review. Uh, where I think uh, my good friend Stika is getting us wrong is that this is not just about audit. And even in terms of audit, we know that um, it will be difficult within the pandemic area to constitute, let's say, an external audit. We spoke to Ministry of Finance at length, and we got to know that, yes, they have their internal audit systems and controls in place. Okay. But then the point is that you're going to score low on some of these things if the information actually is not there. Uh, you know, like I said, we look at openness, we look at issues of oversight, and we look at issues of transparency. Mm. And so it's not just about the audit. We do agree the PFM Act is I mean, strongly on that. And it's not only Ghana. Actually, our, 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 across all the 120 countries that uh, the open budget survey, the COVID-1 focus on, it was the same issue, that the fact that we are in a COVID era, uh, we needed to be a little careful about the interpretation. But even notwithstanding that, still there are certain countries uh, that actually even performed relatively better when it comes to audit and oversight and whatnot. For me, what we need to look at is the lessons that, that this gives us mm -hmm. and not really to go into the nitty gritty. This is not to find fault unnecessarily about government, to, for us to look at how we can improve mm -hmm. upon uh, our, our system. So that is what I, I would say to uh, my good friends, Teka, and to, to all of us as a country that for us, it's a wake-up call that we probably need to look at uh, some of these things. Yes, we're in a pandemic era, mm. but it's also important. We just had, I mean, today news that the audit, the, sorry, the, uh, what is the name? The, not the Auditor General, um, the Minister for... Uh, the Attorney what, General. Attorney General, yes. Attorney General actually indicated today that uh, he will advise the Minister for Health on... And the issue about uh, purchasing the Sputnik vaccine. And we know that we're not in normal terms, but these are, these are some of the things that we are talking about. This is an audit, more or less, part of the so supreme institutions that at least need, as time goes on, be checking on uh, governments to make sure that the right things are done. So exactly that is our, our point. We are not seeking to rubbish anything, but we want to situate that within uh, the confines of uh, the key thing that we, we, we looked at. So that is what I'll say, maybe for... Specifically, um, other, specifically um, uh, tell me how you arrived at the uh, inconsistencies, the transparency bit, because Doc's problem is the fact that, did you set your own benchmark or exactly what benchmark did you use uh, to conduct the survey? So this this... It's not just a Ghana survey. It's part of the Open Budget Initiative. That is done. As I said, since 2006, we've been doing this. Every, every two years, we, we, we collect this information. We do closely with the Ministry of Finance. So this is not something new. It's an international benchmark, but as much as possible, country contests differ. So we, as much as possible, try to situate it within the country contest. It would be wrong for us to basically be comparing Ghanaian situation to that of the U.S. or that of uh, even our neighbors, Togo. So as my well, we try to situate it within the country. That's why I'm giving this content that though we seem not to have performed, let's say, well, on certain benchmarks, we understand that uh, in the COVID era, certain things could possibly would have been done uh, in a different way. When we engage in the Ministry of Finance, I mean, it became clear that in terms of even engaging um, stakeholders, which is part of the participation, uh, I remember they spoke strongly that sometimes they try to reach out to the, the religious bodies. And then the fact is that you could only just reach out to them. They also need to be up and doing and come um, up front. But some of them, it took quite some time to do that. If this information are not there. If we hadn't engaged the Ministry of Finance, obviously we wouldn't have known. Okay. So th these are some of the things that we're saying as much as possible, well, put the information out there and let the information be timely. Mm. That would also help to inform uh, certain uh, acts and decisions going forward. Mm. So, so it's something that we've been dealing uh, with the Ministry, but we thought that it's important we, we highlight uh, such things just for uh, improvement. We, we made certain recommendations which 
I believe that, of course, once we take on board, that is going to um, help all of us. I think it's now right to bring in Dr. Kojopoku in here. Doc, you've seen this survey. What's your initial reaction? Kindly unmute for me, um, Dr. Poku. Good evening. Um, thank you very much and good evening to your viewers. Um, so my initial um, view is that um, the survey is very important, um, as we always do in budget um, credibility studies. Mm. Um, budget has um, guidelines, and usually you want to see if the government is um, adhering to these um, guidelines. Okay. So basically, um, you have, as part of it, you have transparency as part of it, and engagement um, with the citizen is also part of it, and sometimes CSOs. So they are all part of the engagement. So you want to know if in government preparing budget and its implementation, those guidelines were um, being adhered to. And so this study is very important um, to, to see if government in implementing it followed the appropriate guidelines. And also one, um, as the sticker mentioned about the, um, the PFM, I think one, what we are, the problem that we are looking at is our understanding about how government prepared its budget. Okay. So there is issue about inconsistency as the study mentioned, uh, mentioned over there. And sometimes the Ministry of Finance gives too little and the CSOs also do not delve into detail into it. So this bring not necessarily an inconsistency but because of differences in understanding. So for example, you mentioned about when you were talking um, your conversation with Stika, you mentioned about the water issue about 275 million that the, it was only spent in um, April to June. Mm. So if you understand how government budget are, is prepared, then you will be able to get an idea what is going on. So in Ghana and many developing countries, we prepare our fiscal report based on cash basis. And so the government of Ghana said from March or April to December, I'm going to spend this amount of money. So for example, electricity and water. And so they, they tell you that from April to June, this is the amount of money that is 275 that we paid. So it is possible that electricity um, water company of Ghana has already provided the services, but government is still owing, so it will be in arrears. But because we prepare in cash basis, we don't record it in the year that was uh, it was accrued. So if you pay it this year, though it happened in 2020, if the government paid this year, we will see it in, um, for example, the first, um, when um, the, um, the Minister of Finance come in, um, ne maybe next Thursday to present a budget, then you see that you be able to mention all those figures if they are paid it. Okay. It is not based on accrual basis. If okay. it's based on accrual basis, then immediately it falls due, you, you have to state it. So okay. if you understand the sales, understand these issues, and government also as part of PFM, they are required to explain if there are deviations, they need to explain it in the budget that if there are deviations, in the budget, they should be able to mention it and explain why they are deviation. And government don't do that. So always, when there are um, um, prefer, prefer, um, there are a lot of people who do this budget credibility analysis, and we always found wanting when it comes to this explanation, we don't provide explanation for where there are variances, especially when the variances are very huge. So I think um, basically there are no inconsistent, but the way our accounts are prepared, how we understand it. Is quite different, and we need to uh, maybe um, the 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 government or the Ministry of Finance should be able to educate or provide more information about how the account is prepared and also provide more details. That's my uh, initial comment. Uh, let's but, explore the bit about uh, Parliament and the Auditor General not exercising oversight responsibility properly. I'll give you the opportunity, please. Yes, and this issue that he said. Okay. So I support him, and mm. I think I raised it. Okay. Uh, from what Doc said, Dr. Opoku, mm. you know he talked about the fact that there could be probably cash um, in process in okay. terms of flows mm. or transfers, okay. but the recording times. Mm. That was why I said that work such as this, 
there should always be exit conference where some of these things you can ask mm. the body that you are auditing or surveying so that they can explain before you do your report. And of course, you heard I Dr. Aifa on that one. Huh? And he, he mentioned lack of information. And I think it is something that we need to address. Because if there's no information, there will be speculation. Even when you contact so, them? Uh, but he said they contacted the finance ministry. You heard him say that. But then you let me put this question to uh, Dr. Poku, and I'll come back to you, Dr. Amwa. He said... Um, the, the oversight responsibility was not done properly. Dr. Amway explains that because we are, in, we are not in normal times, we cannot go through the right procedure or it's difficult actually to exercise that oversight responsibility. Is it enough reason to, to spend without uh, actually going through the right process? Yes, thank you. Um, so, um, so even in, in, we all understand that it was not in normal times. I, and still, we are still having issues with regards to COVID. And um, you expect that um, even in emergency situations, there are guidelines. So when it's come to this transparency and these, um, um, these budget credibility studies, you have to compare with the standards. So even in emergency situations, which I'm not, uh, I cannot be specific about this, um, in emergency situation, there are guidelines as to what the minister should do when you want to, um, um, do a new budget. So, for example, the budget um, from um, January to December, when in November 2019, when government prepared budget, we didn't know of COVID. But in March, they went um, uh, when the COVID when COVID came, and um, in July, I think government of uh, the Minister of Finance went to Parliament, and where it is that place that he asked or ask for the approval of those amount that you, you will be needed. Mm. So I believe even in emergency situation, there are still guidelines that you need to follow. But of course, the, because as the guy said, it's emergency, the, the PFM will allow it to be very short. I mean, not the long process that um, usually that will go through. So I don't think that because it's emergency, then it's a free way to do whatever um, you want. Otherwise, you break the rules. I mean, you breach the, the, um, the, the guidelines and that will also uh, you will be downgraded as um, AIFA talked about it. So if you don't follow the, the guidelines, definitely you you'll be um, you'll be rated down. Mm. Dr. Amwa, uh, now you have the opportunity. Uh, you wanted to respond to um, uh, the fact that uh, there was uh, w uh, the point he makes about <clears throat> non readily available information, um, there was lack of it. And he also talks about even though it's a COVID era or it's a pandemic era, there are still guidelines. Um, I think um, after the two of them have spoken again, mm. um, we all seem to be trying to define um, a common point of convergence. Okay. Like going to the same area and I'm understanding them even more. Okay. And I think I share most of the things they're talking about. Mm. I think we have a cultural problems when it comes to building up our data, financial data, right from day entries through all these double trial balance up to the financial statement. Mm. Because most institutions, and I think it's even affect public sector as well, we have issues with getting these things right and doing them efficiently. Okay. So sometimes, even sometimes, one might not have necessarily embezzled money, mm. whether on the NDC or MPP or yeah. institution A or B, but our inability to ensure that we comply with the set regulations and rules, mm. which lead to some of these issues with data not being available to stakeholders such as doctors and the work that they are doing. Mm. It creates this perception or misconception. Although some of them too, of course, genuinely they are stealing and siphoning money and misappropriating funds. We cannot mm. take away from sometimes to even share errors of accounting. We have the transposition, omission, principle. These are all different forms of accounting errors that probably could have also happened. Okay. That is why I'm saying that normally such exercise, if there is proper way of engaging your target groups or those institutions you handle and the management, you do open, that will help you define mm -hmm. your scope of work, your, your KPIs, your days, your rules of engagement, and you all agree. Mm -hmm. Then when you finish your work, where you have 
issues which have given rise to much controversy. Mm. You come back, that is during the exit conference. Mm. Then you ask them these questions. Okay. So before you put them in your report and send them out, then, of course, but maybe what they are saying is also true. Mm. Maybe others knowing the shortfalls in what they have done mm. may have hidden vital pieces of information from them. So I hope you understand. Yeah, so, the, so with the oversight um, issue, did you follow the guidelines as uh, parliamentarians? You're talking about? With the COVID expenditures, did you follow the guidelines? Is it, is it me or the... I the mean, one? in parliament, you're a member of parliament. Oh, no, no, you know, we, we parliamentarians have issues. Some have issues okay. with probably the way uh, some of the prices were as compared to the market averages mm. on the globe. Okay. We're having ours. Mm. And the explanation of the minister, which of course, everybody has a way of responding to issues. Okay. Maybe somebody may be 100% genuine, but his way or her way of responding might have raised a lot of issues. Somebody may even be doing wrong, but the way you speak. Okay. All that it boils down to was that we were in a situation that even joint economies such as UK and co, mm. you remember during the second shot, mm. they were not getting Okay. And it created national frustration all over, on the globe. Mm. In situations such as that, let me tell you, you might have made a lot of mistakes. These things were there. Mm. We, our work is different. Committee level, you work on that. It comes to probably, they will come, somebody can start asking a lot of questions, file a question, mm. okay? okay? I mean, on the floor, you come and answer to clear some of these things. But it also gets to the point that we also have auditor's report. Mm. And sometimes even a finance minister can also be quizzed on all these things. Mm. But the processes are normally left with the, 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 the spenders. I hope you, you understand what I'm saying. Mm. Like not even with the board. Okay. They approve so, so policies. So sincerely, you think that uh, you follow the guidelines or you may have made mistakes somewhere, oh, I think, but I think, not no, intentional. No, 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 no. I can't say intentional or not. Even mm. that one, I don't want to because mm. I am with my government. I'll come and say something. I'm not 100% sure. Okay. I don't think... We followed strictly all the requirements they are talking about. One, mm. whether that was deliberate or not deliberate, I am saying that the time in which we find ourselves probably could have um, necessitated or induced that, mm. not necessarily even necessitated. Yeah. So we need to analyze these things in this context of the time in which we are. But that does also mean that if somebody is taking on due advantage to misappropriate already Russian budget, because mm. Ghana, we are suffering. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not only to cover time, mm. our budget is always not enough. We have, look, sorry for bringing this. I came from Accra, Kumasi, mm. two days ago. Mm. 8.31 in the morning, I took short photograph of um, a place in Accra here, close to the airport. The, the plane landed 8.33, which means two minutes. If I show you, about 99% of everything that I had here was dusty and tired streets and roads. Mm. We have a lot of issues. So we all care about our resources and what they are doing, they are doing a good job. Okay. But what I'm saying that we should also attach this issue of the timing, the crisis, which could have led to probably mismanagement of some of these things. Mm. And originally, or ritually, we are a country that we have issues with data management and reporting and records. Mm. Even when things are normal and conventional, mm. how much less situations are, I'm not saying we should accept them all. Mm. So in writing their report, it's good, at least we can build on, but sometimes people want to demonize and criminalize other people who probably out of their genuine way of saving lives rather than money and bureaucracies Probably they could have made mistakes and other things. This is what I am talking about. Okay. But their work, so, I think, to me, is fantastic. Right. After explanation that they all give. All right. Um, and I'm going to take a break on PM Express. When I return, they sent Ghana survey, make some recommendations. Remember, the Minister of Finance will be uh, delivering his mid-year uh, budget uh, statements in Parliament on Thursday. What are we going to expect there? Dr. Amwa is here, he'll be telling us, and I'll be asking uh, Dr. Aifa and Dr. Poku what uh, they want to see in that mid-year budget. Stay with me, I'm coming right back. And we're talking about spending of COVID-19 resources.
and uh, St. Ghana report uh, just cited uh, that there were some inconsistencies in the, the spending of monies uh, uh, with regards to COVID-19 activities. Of course, uh, Dr. Amwa here has been explaining why that could happen. But on Thursday, there's going to be a bigger picture of this whole thing we're talking about. Because the Send Ghana report indicated that, for instance, in um, it indicates that on water subsidy, for instance, we know government gave freebies on water for six months. But I mean, according to uh, the 2020, in the 2021 budget, it was only three months that was accounted for. Again, on electricity, 1.1 billion was approved in 2020 media budget. But in 2021 budget, we've not had any accounts for this one. These are some of the situations on which they based their recommendations on. And they're asking the finance ministry going forward to be transparent and provide information on their activities. Let me ask you, Dr. Aifa, as the minister delivers his mid-year budget review, what exactly do you want to see on Thursday? Thank you, Aisha. Um, before I come there, quickly let me say that, um, yes, in terms of even engaging, we did even Make it brief for me, because we are running out of time. OK. So we did engage the ministry even in deciding on, agreeing on the indicators before we set out to, to carry out. Um, and then the, the last thing, it's about uh, the fact that in this media budget, of course, uh, we are seeking to um, expect government to, as much as possible, come up with certain proper um, intervention policies. Because the fact is that the COVID uh, has really hit people, have people lost their livelihoods, and the 2021 budget came up with a lot of taxes. Uh, that seemingly uh, hitting people hard. So as, as people who work uh, taking into considering the, 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 the concerns of the marginalized in society, we think that, yes, it is hard. Government to mob, need to mobilize resources, but there should be policies to make sure that at least doesn't hit uh, the poor hard. That is what I would say. Okay. Um, just, to, just, just to conclude on the, the substance, the report, uh, yes, we spoke about the issue of um, trying to get Supreme Court issues. Let me cite just a case of Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone clearly, in, in looking at even the COVID, the audit service had real-time auditing approaches to report on COVID. I mean, that was it. It happened in other areas as well, just so that we can also take a cue uh, from some of these things. Thank okay. you. Dr. Amo, um, are we going to see get responses on some of the issues that were raised in this report? in the media uh, budget? Um, you know, as a result of, when I use the, the law, um, asymmetric information mm. management, I cannot because I'm not, uh, I'm not privy to the content or the extract from the budget. Mm. But what I know is that um, the key performance indicators of all state budgets, including what we have, vis-a-vis uh, -vis or against the situation which we find ourselves in, We'll do our best to ensure that we harmonize the indicators, i.e. the deficit, the debt levels, the revenues, and its um, expected GDP growth, and also its expected translations into managing social intervention policies, creating jobs, and also making sure that, of course, these things can also impact and also ensure that uh, we can, in a way, still consolidate and restore and continue what we are doing as a country. I think this is one of the most crucial moments. But these parameters, because our debt levels are going up mm. against our GDP. GDP is not going, which to me is not the fault of the government. Mm. Productivity was on hold. Mm. Revenue were not collected, we're still spending. Mm. But then you cannot say it's not your fault, you are collapsing the country. Mm. So still it's difficult to get revenue. Mm. We still have to move forward. Mm. Productivity has not fully been restored. Mm. So we are in one of our crucial moments. You don't get enough revenue internally. If you borrow to, you are killing your GDP. Mm. So I think we're going to adopt, I mean, pragmatic steps to Thank ensure you. that in the short term, we can mitigate the impact by creating jobs and making sure that we manage the pro-poor policies well. And at the same time, having a, a long-term program that will ensure that going forward, we can provide a resilient and more sustainable the economy. economy. Uh, let me That's give you, uh, Dr. Poku, just uh, briefly, I, ideally, what should we see in the media budget review, briefly? Okay, um, thank you. So I think this um, difficult period to be um, 
finance minister and i expect that um during this um this uh, mid um, media review the government should adopt unconventional taxation to raise more money and also finance from the central bank it is a very difficult period i think this is the way to go to increase its revenue and also borrow from the central bank in order to create employment for um, the people i'm grateful uh, dr poku dr amwa and dr aifa i'm grateful for your time tonight my name is aisha ibrahim enjoy the rest of our programs